and welcome to Crime Bites, the show where we talk about some truly bizarre and disturbing crime cases. My name is Liz and today is True Crime Tuesday. Today I'm going to tell you a devastating story and viewer discretion is strongly encouraged. Of all murders, this particular type baffles me the most and I literally cannot comprehend it. Hurting anyone bothers me, but defenseless people gets me even more, and today we're going to cover a story about one of the most defenseless groups of people out there. Our victim today was less than one month old and died in a horrific manner, so again, viewer discretion is strongly encouraged. So let's meet China Arnold. She was born on March 29th, 1980 in Dayton, Ohio. So before we even start, China has two priors on her record, abduction in 2000 and forgery in 2002. She's kind of a rough character, but she was attempting to turn her life around and she was taking classes at Sinclair Community College and she had aspirations to become a counselor. At the time that our story takes place, China was living with her boyfriend, Terrell Talley, and their three boys in an apartment in Dayton. It's August of 2005, and China Arnold would give birth to a baby girl who she would name Paris. She was excited to be a girl mom after having three boys already. She would have disagreements with the baby's father, Terrell Talley, that would surround fidelity and paternity. On the night of August 29th, 2005, China and Terrell were out at a park on a date night. The couple was enjoying a bottle of Bacardi and started fighting about the issues that they were having in their relationship. Terrell didn't feel that the baby was his and China didn't think he was staying faithful. Apparently, she drove them home erratically and the couple got into a physical altercation in their parking lot. China bit Terrell on the lip and he slapped her and pushed her. Eventually, Terrell would just leave to try to let them both cool down, but he left China with their children. Witnesses described her as being so intoxicated that she could barely walk. According to Terrell, when he arrived back home around three or four that morning, he observed China asleep on one of their couches with Paris sleeping in her car seat nearby. So he curled up on the smaller couch that they had so as not to disturb them. When he woke up again, he went to join his family on the larger couch and that is when he saw that his daughter actually appeared to be dead and have burn-like injuries on her. On August 30th, 2005, at around 7 a.m., China and Terrell would arrive at the children's hospital with their dead daughter. Personnel would try to revive her for around 15 minutes, but she arrived with no pulse, blood pressure, or respiration. China and Terrell would feign innocence, but it was clear from Paris's body that she had some serious injuries. Paris had suffered severe burns, but the nature of these burns would prove to baffle the doctors and coroners for quite some time. First of all, Paris was wearing a clean nightgown, which indicated that she was changed after whatever had happened to her. The burns themselves didn't look like the normal scalding or liquid burns that they were used to seeing, and it was later determined that she had severe internal burns without any real external injuries. When they questioned China about these mysterious burns, her response was that she wasn't burnt and that her skin was just peeling. Because it was obvious that China wasn't being forthcoming with them, the police were soon called. Now it's time to hear China's side of the story. When they first brought China in, she told them that she had went to sleep at nine or 10 that night with Paris on top of her. Paris woke her up around 2.30 for her bottle and the two returned to sleep on the couch afterwards. When she woke back up, Terrell was next to her and Paris was not, so she assumed that he had put her to bed. 
Her story would soon change to her waking up and feeling that Paris was warm and laid her in a bassinet with a fan on her to cool her off. They then brought her to the hospital when they observed her behaving strangely in the morning. She would later say that Terrell took Paris with him and that it was why neighbors had reported her outside at 4 a.m. that morning. Although the parents' testimonies were extremely suspicious, changed, and contradicted each other, neither parent actually incriminated themselves or the other, and eventually they were released. This wouldn't last for too long. In 1999, an epileptic mom in Virginia claimed to have accidentally put her baby in the microwave, killing him. Apparently, her epileptic episodes would give her seizures that would then send her into trances where she could perform complex tasks but not remember or always use the correct items for the task, which left to mixed feelings about this particular case. And ultimately, this mother was convicted of involuntary manslaughter. The medical examiner who worked this case somehow was brought on to Paris's and pointed out the similarities between the burns that killed this little boy and the burns that baby Paris had endured. The little boy's legs suffered the majority of the burns in his case, whereas Paris's head would receive the majority of the burns because the direction they were placed into the microwave in relation to the heating units. So once the murder weapon was identified, the police went back to the apartment where they found traces of Paris's DNA in the microwave. Her exact cause of death was that her internal temperatures had reached temperatures above critical. In other words, she was literally cooked. China had not only stuffed her baby girl in the microwave, but she hit the timer, set it for two minutes, and waited. So let's go ahead and do that now, just so you can get an idea for this. I'm sure the sounds of her child screaming and literally being cooked from the inside out were horrific, but she waited. Then she took the child out, bathed her, changed her, and put her to bed like nothing had happened. Forensics would find traces of her skin just clumped in the bottom of the tub. It's truly horrific. In 2008, China was tried for the murder of her baby girl. However, at the end of this trial, everything would get derailed. You see, Terrell's son from a different marriage would state that he had seen a neighborhood boy put baby Paris in the microwave and that he had taken her out. This would cause China's trial to end in a mistrial until new evidence came forward. After the conclusion of the first trial, it was determined that Terrell's son was not even in the area that evening, making his testimony false. He was five at the time of the murder. So the case went back to trial. This time there was more new evidence. While she was awaiting her trial, apparently China had confessed to her cellmate, Linda Williams, whom she developed a romantic relationship with, that she had, in fact, microwaved her baby. <clears throat> when her cellmate asked her how she did it, she just shrugged and stated that she just fit right in. She also stated that the reason that she did it was she was afraid that Terrell would leave her if he wasn't the father, which maybe she suspected he wasn't. When everything was said and done, it would turn out that Terrell was in fact the father. There it is, two minutes. That's how long that poor baby was being burned in a microwave for. Anyways, this time the jury would convict China of aggravated murder and sentence her to life in prison. This conviction would be overturned due to prosecutorial misconduct and the court didn't allow for material witnesses. 
So China would end up having a third trial and the same conviction was given, aggravated murder with a sentence of life in prison. And I cannot even begin to comprehend or imagine, even in an aggravated drunken state, how someone could do something like this. Judge Mary Wiseman stated that this crime was shocking and utterly abhorrent for a civilized society. No adjectives exist to adequately describe this heinous atrocity. I completely agree. Okay, so how do you follow up a story like that? I honestly have no idea, but here's our follow up for today. So today we're gonna highlight a little hero named Polo. Erica was home with her eight month old daughter Vivian and her dog Polo when she stepped out of her car to grab something and when she turned around it was like her house was engulfed in flames. Horrified, Erica ran inside to try to save her daughter but the smoke was so heavy that she couldn't get up the stairs and she actually burned the skin off her hand just grabbing her handrail. When responders were finally able to arrive and reach Vivian, she was still alive with Polo lying on top of her, shielding her from the fire. Vivian only sustained burns on her arms and sides because of this, and they believe she might not have made it had it not been for Polo's bravery. Sadly, Polo did not survive, and Erica believes that he could have made it out of the room, but chose to stay with her daughter instead and he ended up sacrificing his life for hers so that's gonna do it for today and thank you so much for joining me please be sure to subscribe if you haven't and let me know in the comments what you think about this case for now I'm done because this possibly is the most evil and devastating case that I have ever heard it is definitely up there at least. So until next week, stay safe everyone. Bye!